Of the thread colors used to decorate the linen, the meaning of scarlet should be easiest to solve because the scarlet thread runs through scripture. And yet, as we examine it, we see what appears to be two contrasting ideas. Two Hebrew words are used for this color, both of them in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Though your sins be like scarlet, the Hebrew is shani, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, the Hebrew is tola'ath, they shall be as wool. We hear of it first in the story of Tamar, bearing children to Judah, where the scarlet thread was used to mark the firstborn and is linked to the line of the Savior, Genesis 38, 28. Rahab's scarlet thread was used in the rescue of her family from Jericho's judgment, and she is also linked to the Savior's genealogy. Scarlet was also used in the ritual cleansing of the leper, Leviticus 14, verse 4. In the ultimate irony, Matthew says it is the color of the garment given to the Lord Jesus at his trial, Matthew 27, 28, and the one to be worn by the epitome of sinfulness, the mother of harlots. How do we make sense of all this? Is it that sins are like scarlet or the very opposite, the savior from sin? In fact, it's both. A red stop sign warns of danger and provides safety. We can find help in Psalm 22. In answering the question of verse one, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The redeemer explains, but I am a worm and no man, verse six. What does this mean? The word translated worm is tolath shani, the scarlet worm, termes vermilio, an insect which feeds on the oak tree and is crushed to produce scarlet dye. What humility. Christ's crushing provided our saving. So this color speaks of the humbling humanity of our Lord bearing our sins in his body on the tree so we may be white as snow. I've left discussing purple to last, even though it always appears in the middle, as in curtains of fine woven linen and blue, purple, and scarlet thread, Exodus 26, one. Of course, the colors are that way on a color wheel. Blue and red are primary colors along with yellow. Although there was no yellow per se in the tabernacle, it was filled with gold. But when you mix blue and scarlet, you end up with purple. Not that the craftspeople mix their dyes. The purple dye they used came from a sea snail called Murex trunculus. Supposedly each snail produced a single drop. So for one pound of dye, it took about four million mollusks. Any wonder that it was reserved for royalty and the wealthy? It was the most expensive color in ancient times. You find many references to purple linked with power and prestige throughout scripture. Mordecai wore, quote, a garment of fine linen and purple, Esther 8.15, when he was honored for mediating his people's rescue. Of the virtuous woman we read, quote, her clothing is fine linen and purple, Proverbs 31.22. And Belshazzar promised that anyone who could interpret the writing on the wall shall be clothed with purple, Daniel 5, 7. Mark and John saw the robe Jesus wore as more purple than scarlet. And anyone who has mixed reds, blues, and purples knows the challenge. But what if you blended the heroic humanity of Jesus and the true blue of his heavenly origins? Wouldn't you get the rich purple of the rightful king, the one mediator between God and men, 1 Timothy 2, 5? Looking unto Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and has sat down on the right hand of the throne of God, Hebrews 12, verse 2. So here's the formula for purple. The Son plus the Savior equals 
the sovereign. Hallelujah. <laughs>